Network, reaching our world for 39 years. to Joy in Our Town. I'm Reba Tony. Now, Dan Daniel Mendez, a kind brother, a loving son, avid football fan, an honor roll student, a black belt in Taekwondo, a Boy Scout, guitar and trumpet player, and above all, a peace activist. Daniel Mendez ended his life in 2009 after enduring years of bullying. This morning, we're talking with his family. They're making their first public appearance, their first interview um, here on Joy in Our Town. Uh, we want to talk about bullying. Thank you so much for being here. We are joined by Danny, um, Anna, and Victoria, Daniel's family. Thank you. Thank you. Now, first thing I want to do is I want to talk about Daniel um, because he seems like such a cool kid. Um, he was 16 years old in 2009. Mm -hmm. And as a 16-year-old, what was he like, Mom? Daniel was the most amazing child any parent could ever ask for. Um, he was funny. He was active. When he was in the house, you knew Daniel was home. He was running up and down the stairs. He was engaged. He would pull me into his room and, and have me watch a clip of his favorite comedian, Frank Caliendo, and, you know, in, in, um, interviewing or imitating Robert De Niro. And we would laugh together. Um, he loved comedy. He was loved, he taller than you at 16? He was very tall. Uh -huh. He was muscular. He was handsome. Mm -hmm. I look at her and I see, I look at Victoria and I see Daniel. His, he had beautiful dark eyes. Mm -hmm. um, he was just the most amazing child in the world. He really did not give us any problems at all. There were no teenage problems that we can speak of. Um, we used to think that being a parent was coming so easy to us and how were we getting away with no mm. problems mm -hmm. because he was such a loving child. Dad, what was it like having having your son around? Did you guys do uh, father son activities? Oh yeah, well, <clears throat> no, it was it was a lot of fun with Daniel because, I mean, he loved football so much. He was always, oh, Dad, let's go throw the football out out in the front of the house, and mm -hmm. uh, he loved to go fishing and you know hiking and rock climbing and. Do you remember the first time he caught a fish? Uh, yes, actually, we were fishing. Um, in Cabo, and he was seasick. He was, <laughs> I get seasick too. He was laying down, but when he heard the reels start uh, whistling, uh, he jumped right up and reeled in his fish. So uh, those are great memories to have. Yeah. How about you, Victoria? Danny was your older brother. Mm -hmm. Now four years older. Um, what are your first memories of your brother? Well, I just remember him always just being around, and like when I was like five. No, I wasn't five. He was like probably seven, and I was like just getting to the point where I like wanted to go to school, like because uh -huh. I was jealous that he was going to school and I was staying home all by myself. Aww. And he would come home from school every day, and he would set up like this little whiteboard, and he would like pretend that I was in school with me. Aw, he would yeah. pretend like you were going to school mm -hmm. too. Yeah, and he was always like protecting me, mm -hmm. and we would. We would just do everything together, like, we were like best friends. Oh, that's so sweet. Now, he was your older brother who protected you, but there, it seems like that he wasn't finding that protection at school. Is that's that the right. case? He was bullied. This is a, a topic that has been even more so in the news lately. We see it even with the bus driver, Karen. I'm sure you've seen that footage. Yes. Um, just horrible, the indecencies that can happen. Mm -hmm. uh, when did you first hear that Daniel was being bullied? Well, there were a few incidents in elementary school mm -hmm. that we knew about, but the real bullying didn't start until middle school. Mm -hmm. And I always said that but middle school really kicked Daniel in the teeth mm -hmm. because he was looking so forward to it and he was approaching it in such an open and an innocent way. Mm -hmm. and. 
we always showed our children the best of life and what a beautiful world it was. So I don't know if we didn't prepare him enough for the harsh realities of middle school. And, and that's a mistake we may have made. But we didn't know that there were harsh realities to prepare a child for. So when the bullying first started, he, he approached in a very practical manner and said, don't worry, Mom, I have it handled. I'm going to report the bullies. Mm -hmm. And he did. Mm -hmm. And we thought that that was going to be the end of it. And that's when um, Daniel broke down in tears one night and said, reporting the bullies was the worst thing I could ever have done. It's become a thousand times worse. Yeah. Kids I don't even know are calling me snitch and loser and you might as well end your life and you're never going to have any friends. And it, it just got worse after that. Wow, so that started pretty early. It, it was very early. Was he already, he was already doing sports, he was already in Taekwondo, he had a, the support of a loving family, a loving father, mm -hmm. and yes. still he was targeted. There was, there was no reason for it. It made no sense. That's one, that is one of the messages that we really try to communicate to parents through our efforts with the National Association of People Against Bullying, is that there really is no profile we continue to try to profile the kids that are most likely to be bullied. Mm -hmm. And what we try to impress upon people is the bullying is not a class issue. It affects kids of all races, mm -hmm. color, creed, religion, mm -hmm. economic sta stand, um, and sexual preference. It, it right. in includes everybody. It does not discriminate. Uh, Dad, now, when you heard that he was being bullied, um, as a father, did you, did you want to just go down there and like grab those kids and throw them in the ocean next to San Clemente? I mean, what do you, what do, you do as a dad? How, what, do you, what, what were your options at that point? Well, I mean, one, one part about all that, though, is as Daniel reported them in middle school, mm -hmm. um, then we, we at one point thought things were getting better for him. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, you, you, know, you, you want to try to let him handle it himself. Sure. And then after he got, after the bullying increased f for him, that he was a little bit quieter about it, so he wasn't really telling us about it at that time. Mm. Um, and until um, he got into high school, then we could tell that something was going on there. And um, we, you know, we spoke to the to the administration at the high school at one point in time. Um, but it just, just really nothing was done. Yeah. And I think the dynamic there with father and mother, I, at what I found is that the fathers typically tend to believe that the child can handle it themselves right. and they have to learn how. I was the one that was really freaking out saying, I want this to stop. I mm. wanted to go down to the kids and just really grab them and shake, their, you know, shake them by the shoulders and say, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. He was the one calming me down saying, let him, you know, he needs to learn to fight his own battles. Right. Everything's going to be okay. Yeah. And I think that's just the difference between a mother and a father. Yeah, because that would be my first instinct, too, as a, as a mom, as a woman. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, grab those kids. Right. What's going on? Right. But they're, it's true, you know. Um, once they get to a certain age, they really do have to learn to maneuver. Mm -hmm. and, and it's kind of where the, the schools and some other systems are failing. Tell me about some of the statistics with bullying and, and how many kids are affected in this grave of a way right. across the country. Well, it's interesting. MSNBC released a study. They studied 500, over 500,000 kids all over the country. And what they found is that by the time the child it gets to high school, he has already been bullied for many, many years. Oh. And they found that... Um, you know, you've heard the statistics, over 160,000 kids stay home from school every day because they're being bullied. But what also happens is the child lose faith, loses faith in the system as they get older. Mm -hmm. So whereas 30% of boys that were surveyed in grade school said they believed that a teacher and the school wasn't doing enough, it was over 60% by the time they got to high school. Wow. So they lose faith in the system. and every they day it happens and there's nothing's no, done. There's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to turn. Right. And like you said earlier, he, after reporting it, he felt like it got worse. Exactly. And experts, experts make a differentiation between two different types of bullying. One is the single event 
the rape, the you know the tra the single event that's mm -hmm. horrific, and then there's the chronic trauma that is an accumulation of everyday insults and attacks to oh. one's integrity, and that is the one that really damages a child's psyche, mm -hmm. and it's very very hard to prove because there are no physical wounds. Almost like um, let's say if you were raped or in a domestic a, a, abusive situation and you had to live with that abuser. That's right. Here's somebody that's they have maybe a major bullying incident but then they're every day living with that abuser so even the next day even if he doesn't say anything just a look by him is going to instigate that's that right. same pain and, and right. re-injure again. That's right. Wow so that's a lot of days cons consecutive days. That's right and it causes what they refer to as PTSD post-traumatic stress disorder mm -hmm. that is very very, very damaging psychologically to a child's mind. That's and what the, our military get when they, when they come home from Afghanistan. That's right, exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the suicide rates now are skyrocketing among the war veterans that come back. Mm -hmm. Very same thing that our children are experiencing in the school environment. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and that's one thing that I think that the bullies themselves don't, don't understand the, the effect that they're having on on the victim by just constant constant harassment and constant bullying um, it, it just takes a, a, a big toll over time um, you know some of them sometimes they think well it's just you know I'm just like you know calling them names but you know somebody's calling you names every day you know for years mm -hmm. um, and then you you couple that with you know, three or four people doing that to you mm -hmm. every day, right. it just it results in the, in the PTSD that Anna was talking about. And I, I can't help but think from being on the outside of it and looking in that whoever was bullying him, that was probably their red flag help something tragic is happening in my life. You're absolutely and right. And for that to be ignored is not only a tragedy for your family, but for that other child and their family as well. It's, it's so much pain and, and hurt on all sides. You're so right, Reba, and that's the other thing that we tell parents is that if your child is accused of being a bully or if you receive a phone call saying your child is bullying someone, they shouldn't be defensive. They should try to seek help for their child. Right. Bullies are six times more likely to be incarcerated by the time they're age 24 than the general wow. population. So if you believe your child is bullying someone, mm -hmm. the best thing you can do is get them help. Teach them emotional intelligence mm -hmm. because our schools aren't. And our schools have limited resources. Sure. But right now they're focusing on academic excellence, mm -hmm. not emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. But it's, every, it's, it's, it's a home, it's the schools, it's the therapy purpose everybody needs to change and they and, and be very aware and like you be said very if somebody's aware. saying something about your son or daughter you need to listen to that don't that's take it right. as a personal assault on your family take it as a call to action that's right and Victoria that's what you've really done you've taken this as as a call to action I, I imagine for you going through this um, this will forever be a part of your life and as your brother will forever be a part of your life tell me about what you're doing at your school now with um, cool to be kind well, after Daniel's death, his friends started this club called Cool to Be Kind. Mm -hmm. And um, last year, it was my freshman year in high school, <clears throat> and I, be, I was a leader in it, and I'm the incoming president for next year. Oh, that's great. And we're, we've been doing a lot with, like, having anti-bullying activities and dances uh -huh. and that kind of thing, and we're just, like, really trying to convey the message that, like, we need to change the way that it's okay to treat people because... Um, Right now, bullies, like, they put people down to make themselves, like, look cooler. Mm -hmm. And if someone just steps in and says, like, that's not okay, like, it's not cool, then if the bully knows that it's actually making them look worse instead of better, like, they don't have any reason to continue and they're not continue. going to. That's and, like, it shouldn't be cool to be a jerk. Like, it should be cool to be kind. Right. Now, and I know as a younger sibling, you must um, have spent many years of your life kind of looking over to see if your brother was watching you. Yeah. Do you feel like he's watching you right now? And what do you think he would, do you think he'd be proud of what you're doing with Cool To Be Kind? Yeah, I think he definitely would be proud of me. And I, th I feel like he's with me and he's like watching me and protecting me, so. Ah, <sighs> that gets me. <laughs> Beautiful story. Mom, what would you say to Daniel right now if you were watching? You know, I, I would say I am so sorry because as a mom 
any parent that loses a child, mm -hmm. I don't care how that child dies, you feel a sense of loss and a sense of failure as a parent. Mm -hmm. And so I pray to him, I pray to Lord God Jesus every night, and I pray to Daniel, and I start off with, sweetie, I am so sorry. Mm -hmm. And I know that, you know, people will tell me it's not your fault, but it's not about that. It's about accepting my parent, parent responsibilities. And I feel that I did not advocate for him enough. Mm -hmm. I was totally unaware of the very, very damaging effects that bullying can have. I knew all about disease. I had warned him about people trying to push drugs on him. I had mm -hmm. warned him about peer pressure. I did not myself, I was not aware enough and educated enough in the ramifications, the serious ramifications that bullying can have. And for that, I will always be sorry to him. Mm. Well, I'm sure that he forgives you because really none of us knew the effects of bullying until recently with stories like mm -hmm. this that have come out and um, and and we're all very thankful uh, for your testimony because we know we overcome by these testimonies and you guys are making changes for the people that are coming up next and that's huge uh, we thank you so much for being here uh, we're gonna be right back with another real-life story um, and testimony of how uh, another organization is helping in the fight against bullying but first watch this about me. I wish I could just disappear. I wish I didn't have to be so scared. I wish my parents would just listen. I wish there wasn't so much pressure. I wish she didn't cheat on me. I wish I wasn't so messed up right now. I wish I didn't feel so alone. Wish you had someone to talk to? You do. We're the Boys Town National Hotline. We're here to help when you need it most, any day, any time. In California, call 1-800-448-3000. It's your life. It's your voice. Use it. We're talking about um, the hot, hot button issue of bullying. For years, people thought that it was something that was going to make our kids tougher. Uh, that it was something that everybody had to experience. Now we're finding out that um, it's not. It's, uh, it's causing serious emotional trauma and it, it is affecting uh, a large, a large portion of our population, of our young people in a, in a tragic way. Uh, we are joined now with um, Bridges, which is an organization with Eric Lamb and Jennifer, an organization that you guys have both been a part of for years uh, that's making a difference in bullying and people being bullied. Um, now, Eric, thank you so much for being here and Absolutely. thank you uh, for bringing Jennifer. Uh, so four years ago, you're you're coming to southern back to southern california mm -hmm. and um, you hear of bridges was it just starting or was this um was this something that uh had already been there bridges was a program that was established in the early 80s okay so when i came back um, i had heard about the work the fabulous work that they were doing in schools and i knew i wanted to come back and to, particularly to schools and help out Particular, particularly to do that. Yeah. Okay, so you left Southern California. He left us for a little bit, went to New York, got his grad school degree, came back, 
Southern California. We're great. This is a local program. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad to have you back. Um, and uh, when you got back now, Bridges goes into the schools and specifically talks about bullying. Um, well, Bridges goes into schools and we identify different human relations issues on campus. Okay. So they can be about bullying, they can be um, about issues of inclusiveness, about school mm -hmm. safety. Mm -hmm. um, so the students and administrators identify the needs of the school mm -hmm. and from there we address the issue. And you have six schools that you regularly go to here in, in Southern California? Yeah. So I oversee six different schools, but Bridges is currently in over 20 schools. In over 20. Time. And in each of those schools you have young people like Jennifer who are acting as student leaders in these different um, issues that are happening. Mm -hmm. uh, talk for a minute about um, what bullying is and when it occurs. Bullying is aggressive behavior that happens repeatedly over time mm -hmm. and involves a power imbalance. So it's not an isolated incident. Mm -hmm. um, it, re it requires something to happen over time and repeatedly. And bullying... Um, so if a kid gets in one fight, that's not necessarily bullying? No. That would be one incident. Okay. So bullying happens over time. It's mm -hmm. repeated and is often a power imbalance. And oftentimes bullies, um, they often have the most self-esteem. They have high self, um, high confidence level. So they're really popular. They have lots of friends. Mm -hmm. And as a result, they pull their friends with them into mm -hmm. bullying others as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why there's such a power imbalance and it feels so negative. On it's the kind of like one against many. Yeah. And w when you see these kids being bullied, um, w what does Bridges do to, to help mend that? So Bridges works with staff, with students, mm -hmm. um, with administrators and, and parents to really uh, take a look at the issue and where the root cause of it is starting. Mm -hmm. And at one particular school, Magnolia High School, mm -hmm. uh, they created a campaign called That's Whack. And That's Whack um, stands for Words Hurt and Can Kill. Mm. And Jennifer, you're a part of starting That's Whack? Yeah, I was a part of starting That's Whack. I went to Magnolia High School. Um, like Eric said, um, we started the campaign. It actually came about at a student retreat, a student training. We were identifying some key issues about human relations on campus, and mm. we realized that a lot of the bullying and the drama that occurred on campus was because students were using hurtful and toxic language. and we wanted to show students, like, we've all heard of that phrase, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And we wanted to prove that statement fault. We, want, we wanted to show students, um, you know, words actually do have the ability to hurt someone more than physical violence. And we wanted to show students, um, it's not just one student, it takes the whole student body, and that's actually what happened. We got everyone in it, so it was really cool. Oh, that's great. Uh, we just spoke with, before you guys came up, um, Daniel Mendez's family, and his mom was expressing, um, you know, her grief in, in feeling so helpless during this whole thing, not knowing what to do, where to turn, who, who can help this situation at the school. You know, the parents aren't at the school every day. Mm -hmm. they, they can do things at home, but who takes over at the school? The administrators, the school officials, are they're focused on academics mm -hmm. so it's programs like bridges that step in and, and really help absolutely and bridges really tries to empower the bystander we believe in that everyone has a voice mm -hmm. and that voice should be heard mm -hmm. and that people can really take a stand when things like this are happening bullying can really affect everybody it affects everybody so even uh, you were saying Jennifer you weren't bullied no I'm, I actually wasn't bullying my friends were uh -huh. uh, but it's funny because my friends who were bullied they actually were the people who accepted me the most they were the people that I didn't have to pretend I was anything but myself with mm -hmm. and I think that they only deserve the same acceptance that they gave me so you were one of those bystanders yeah who would stand up for people even if they were being bullied yeah and uh, a lot of Something I learned with this campaign is that it's important to stand up for people even if, you know, it, you may lose some of your popularity points or may make you not look cool. Like, if you're not going to do it, who else is going to? Right, right. I, I can remember walking into the school cafeteria. We moved a lot growing up. And that feeling of walking in and looking at all these students and wondering who's going to accept me, who, mm -hmm. where can I sit where they're going to be okay with me sitting there and not judge me or um, look down on me or, you know, where do I fit? And when I see young people so often, I feel, I feel for them because I know that's a daily occurrence mm -hmm. for a lot of kids. Um, what is it like in the, in the cafeterias at, of schools nowadays? 
Um, I guess it's definitely intimidating because you walk around and you see everyone in their little group and uh, everything's already organized kind of that way. And when I think when you try to make friends like in the middle of high school, everyone's already kind of set in their own group of friends. So it's a little weird. It can be hard to make friends, especially if you're new kids um, also. So I think it definitely can be intimidating for kids. Um, tell me, Eric, about uh, Bridges and, and how it's gotten established here in Orange County and, and how the mission can, can really be a model for other schools. Sure. Um, well, Bridges is a program of Orange County Human Relations, mm -hmm. and Orange County Human Relations was founded in 1971 by the, the County Board of Supervisors. Mm -hmm. And since then, we've uh, uh, created our own nonprofit, and Bridges is a program that continues to go to schools and educate the community and empower the community to really take a stand against issues. Um, so uh, Bridges is about making sure that people have a voice, have a safe space mm -hmm. uh, to talk about the issues, mm -hmm. but more importantly to really take action around those issues. So they create campaigns um, and solutions that are according to their needs. Mm -hmm. uh, so in that case it's very school sensitive, it's very community based. So all your schools have different kind of action plans? Yeah, so our schools have different campaigns, and Magnolia is one of them, especially, it's one of our highlights, actually. Yeah, that's yeah. whack. That's whack. It is. It's really catchy, and, yeah. Even, like, students who weren't in the club, I caught them saying, like, when the campaign started getting bigger, uh -huh. um, and bullying would occur, I heard students saying, hey, that's whack. Yeah. Say that. It definitely caught on, so right. it was pretty cool to see. Uh, even students not in the club to say that. To say it. And even yeah. the principal. Yeah. At times he would be walking around campus like during lunch hour and then he's, he catches some phrase that's being tossed around and he's like, hey, that's whack. And the students know. They know, you know what it means. They get it. And it makes sense and it's catchy. Yeah. yeah. And it's something that, yeah, it's catchy. It's something that young people will want to say. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, that's inappropriate, sir. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to hear a young person saying that. So no. that's yeah. whack is definitely something they'd say. Mm -hmm. Is it something you want to spread to the other schools or is this? Yeah, we're hoping that um, something like this definitely catches on with other schools. Other schools have created similar campaigns. Mm -hmm. um, and but their slogans aren't as catchy. <laughs> exactly. Um, but we're hoping that other schools understand that something can happen and something needs to happen. Mm -hmm. um, bullying something, shouldn't be something that is accepted as a norm. Mm -hmm. um, it's an issue that affects everybody. Do you have kids right now that you know at different schools that are being bullied? Yeah, absolutely. What do they say to you? Um, they ask why. You know, that's one of their most um, pressing issues is why, and why me in particular. Um, so we go through questions of identity and understanding, you know what, like, you're special, you're unique, and we mm -hmm. should really capitalize on the diversity of you, who you are, mm -hmm. and what you bring. Yeah. So it really takes a toll on their self-esteem. Yeah, absolutely. And to its very core of mm -hmm. who they are, their mm -hmm. identity. You try to build that back up. Absolutely. Do you get their parents involved, or is there is there any uh, how how does that work with the community? Um, when we have end of the year celebrations, sometimes or mid year celebrations, we try to definitely involve their parents, and they come out and they celebrate and they see how their student is becoming de uh, getting more developed, how the mm -hmm. student is getting more self esteem, um, and it happens not just over like a, like one semester. It happens over time. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of time to develop and. Once there's a, a core support group around that student, mm -hmm. um, like a Bridges program or like other teachers or friends that are around them that surround them, mm -hmm. uh, that's when really they can begin to take pride in who they are and really become who they're supposed to be. How do you, um, how do you find kids that are being bullied? Uh, Jennifer, I know you said that um, when you started um, with Bridges and as a sophomore, there were like less than 10 people and yeah. now they're uh, as a senior more than 40. Uh, Eric, how do you uh, how do you find someone who might be isolated or um, feeling alone in, in, in being picked on? Do they come to you? Do you find them? We um, with Bridges, we try to do different events throughout the school year. Mm -hmm. So for instance, um, we can do um, like workshops Right, or we can go into classrooms and do classroom presentations, mm -hmm. or we can do lunchtime events um, mm -hmm. that really get the word out. Um, for like, for instance, we do um, a day called the Day of Silence. Right. 
something called the Day of Silence. It's a national day mm -hmm. um, where students, teachers, anyone can stay silent in respect of those uh, who have been killed or who committed suicide mm. because of simply being who they are. Well, we are so thankful for what you guys are doing. Congratulations on your, your recent graduation. Thank you. Eric, thank you so much for being part of Bridges and for coming back to Southern California where you belong. <laughs> uh, this is all things Southern California. We've been talking about bullying. If you know somebody who's being bullied, uh, try and support them today because they need your love and support. Thank you for watching Joy in Our Town. We'll see you next week. This program has been sponsored by the Trinity Broadcasting Network and made possible by your telethon dollars. So write Join Our Town, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711.